problem with TED is you're always looking at the person in front of you. So I would like you to take just a minute and look at the person next to you and smile. <laughs> Please do. Yes, just smile. I mean, it's horrible to only be looking at that centerpiece. Look next to you, please, and smile again. Don't smile once, because I told you. Smile a second time, because you've got to smile for free. I'm not going into the hugging part now, but at least we've got to smile. Three times TEDx. And I tell you, when I presented in 2009 and 2011, I could not imagine that I would be presenting projects today that went beyond my own dreams. And going beyond your own dreams is the best you can do in life. Because we're dreaming to transform society. And do we transform it the way that Venice looks like? Do we want to transform it into Paris? Do we want to transform it into Geneva with your gardens? Do you want to transform it into Copenhagen? Or Dubai? Look a little bit closer. I don't want to spend $5 million on a house in a row, even if it looks beautiful from far. Or are we going to realize that there is Chernobyl we create as human species, the only dead city of modern times because of nuclear fallout? And are we going to believe that we can grow through this and get life created again? Are we then, though, prepared to use fossil water and waste it in 20, 30 years? Are we prepared to do it with GMO like America does? Are we prepared to create these wind farms? Are we, create, are we prepared to create these huge waste dumps? We have to look at this glass of water, and this glass of water is not half full or not half empty. It is always full. It is full with water and air. And the problem is, we don't see the air anymore. We know we have to breathe it, but we don't see anything anymore. So to me, I need to be inspired to see more than what we see today. And I'm inspired by nature, and I'm inspired by people. Like Wendy Luhabe, who created the first bank by women, accepting only woman, money from women, and only deciding on how to use the money by women. So, quote, on the stock exchange in Johannesburg, $1.4 billion. Or Her Majesty Queen Mother of Bhutan, who walks to the villages to see the plight of the people. Or Katia Bastioli, who is the queen of bioplastics. Do you know Katrina Bach? I'm glad you don't. She's my wife. <laughs> Here are my children. But what I want to tell you about my children is my youngest son, Philip Emmanuel, harvested his first mushrooms at two and a half years old. He harvested mushrooms because his sister, Cheeto, took him to the forest in South Africa, picked up a mushroom, took a little piece, put it in a wet newspaper, put it under, this, under his bed, and two weeks later, the molds were put into the coffee of mom's waste. Coffee waste. And two weeks later, he's harvesting mushrooms. This boy doesn't believe there's hunger in the world. This boy believes there's ignorance on how we tackle the problems. And I tried to tackle it with my way, with this green factory in 92, exactly 20 years ago. But I was using palm oil, destroying rainforests, and I didn't know. I had a biodegradable product, and it was not sustainable. So I started working with concrete projects on the ground, one after the other, summarized in the report to the Club of Rome, and having a hundred innovations that in 10 years would generate 100 million jobs. By now we have 3 million. Done. 97 to go. I love this green economy, but I cannot stand an economy where what is good for you and good for the environment is expensive, therefore for the rich. Therefore I propose a blue economy. An economy that is innovative, competitive, and at the same time, we generate jobs because one of the greatest problems we have in our society is millions of youth unemployed. We cannot have that. Green was a good idea. We need to do better. And therefore, we scan for opportunities. We need a vision sourced in fantasy. But therefore, we need to translate reality into signs and take risks. Expose yourself to new ideas. Inspire and then do it. There's too much talking in this world, too much watching talking. We gotta do. 
And therefore I love my dear friend Chu Ting Chang, 82 years old, who taught Carmenza Jaramillo in Colombia and my daughter Chido on how to farm mushrooms, going to villages and go to the women and say, hey, on the waste of your coffee, you can grow mushrooms. And you know, in Africa, when you tell that to the village people, they sing and dance. You tell it to someone in Tokyo, they want a feasibility study. <laughs> Technology audit. Hire Accenture. Hire Mitsubishi. Check it out. Now we're doing it in Paris, downtown Paris. The first farms are being set up. The coffee waste from the Grand Café, Café Les Deux Magots, Café de la Paix, those cafés in downtown Paris converted to mushrooms, sold to Hôtel Le Maurice. Generating per container six jobs, paying 16 euro. We can go so intense with the mushroom farming on coffee waste that it's mind boggling. It goes beyond what we've seen because now we get better food, more food, and since the coffee only had hot water and steam, we sterilize it and save the energy. We have 300 companies already established around the world just doing this. We outcompete the Chinese on price and quality. And by the way, we're cutting emissions. And it only has just begun. Because now we're in the chemistry of coffee. We all knew very well that if you have a strange smell in your fridge, you put in some coffee, the smell is gone. Now we take the coffee waste from your coffee, we grind it fine, and we put it into polyethylene to make clothing for you so that when you go jogging and you come home, you don't smell. Done. It's operational. And we realize that coffee has molecules that allows you to neutralize UV. So first you drink it, then you eat it, then you wear it. <laughs> 20 cups of coffee is one meter of fabric. Timberland has just adopted our slogan. Drink it, wear it. Take off your shoes, don't smell. We love it. The first factory is full capacity, second factory under construction. I don't need feasibility studies. I don't need boards to decide me. I don't need anyone to tell me that we're wrong and that the science is not right. We got to do it, because as entrepreneurs, we take the risk and move on and don't debate. These are the companies that have signed up last year to use fibers with coffee included. And it only has just begun. Because now, we have done the biggest project we've ever done in our history, the biorefinery. And the biorefinery allows us to take an old petrochemical facility and turn that around into a biorefinery, using in this case not coffee, but thistles. We are converting this facility into a producer of plastics, bioplastics, biolubricants, bioherbicides, bioelastomers. 80% of the petrochemical facility is being reused. We generate income for the farmers, and instead of millions going out to petroleum, millions go into the pockets of the farmers. We clean it up, we reinvigorate. And then I took on the project of mining. Mind you, this petrochemical project is 470 million euro. Done, funded, implemented, opening this October. When you look at mining, you look here at the oldest, the greatest mine of gold. Any gold mine needs water. If I need water, I plant bamboo. If I plant bamboo, then I know I have the opportunity to eliminate exotic species, change the surface temperature, have more rain. But then I have a building material, and the leftovers are good for paper making. I know about building with bamboo. I pioneered it at the World Expo in the 2000s next to the building of Mr. Shigeru Ban, who's supposed to be in the audience as well. But thanks to that experience with the German building permit, we have houses of $950, $50 down, 900 credit, next day prefabricated set up. That's business. That's changing on the ground. But then the bamboo only needs for the housing, six meters. We have 19 meters left, and with that we make paper. Yesterday you want recycled paper, today you want sustainable wood, well, tomorrow it's gonna be bamboo. 
But it means that tomorrow you're going to have water for your mine that pays for the planting of the bamboo. You have housing, you have paper, and by the way, you generate topsoil and you sequester carbon dioxide. Thanks to a mine, it's this business model we're implementing very moment. This moment we're doing, but it has only just begun. Because mines also have a lot of rocks. And the rocks that are around, we have a very simple program for them. We crush the rocks. We crush the rocks and make stone paper. Paper that, mind you, mixed with PET, has no trees, doesn't need water, is recyclable forever, forever, and we free up land that today is used for forests in order to farm more. These cards are made from stones, stone, stone, and it only has just begun. Even these shoes that you're seeing is 60% made from waste from the mine and 40% recycled pet bottles. Do you believe this is possible? Well, unfortunately, the majority of the people don't believe this is possible. And the biggest problem I have is that people say it can't be done. That's the problem. So therefore, I write fables. I inspire children with fables. And every single innovation is translated into something that is inspiring. I want to reach 500 million kids every day, just like Nestle does. Now, I have the approval from the Chinese government to do this. To conclude, use what we have, reindustrialize, innovate and compete, and create a better world. With the words of Nelson Mandela, probably the greatest man on earth, it always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you.